Finally, I have found an all-in-one system that can truly go head-to-head -head with a system such as a Victron. Please remember, one, this is not a power bank, and two, this is not a sponsored video. This is the Clayton LPS2 3000. It has a 3000 watt inverter, which will allow a surge capability of 5,000 watts. It has 160 amp hours battery capacity, a 500 watt B2B, a 400 watt solar input, and it even has RCD protection. So when installing it, you don't need any other consumable items. It's absolutely terrific. I am just back from Ape Adventure Vans where I looked originally to compare the Clayton to what I was always calling the best Victron setup in town. But I don't think I'm going to do that. I don't think that comparing it to something as perfectly executed as the Ape Adventure Vans setup is the correct thing to do for 99% of my audience. Having a deep look into the full conventional system with all the different wiring, the servos, the buck boost, the smart shunts, the battery protect, it confirmed for me one thing, that is a trade. To execute a system such as this, I am in fact saying that you would need to learn a new profession so much research, so much learning of new skills, you have to make sure that it is efficient to do so. If you are going to do one van, if you're gonna do one van a year, if you're going to do two vans a year, going down the Victron route as a DIYer might not be necessary. I have just roughly priced up the system that I initially installed. So not including fuse holders and the bits of cable that go from A to B and linking this to that. This comes out at about £2,000. This system doesn't even have an inverter. If I was to add the 3000 VA, the kind of equivalent that is in the LPS2, we would be right up to £3,000. And this only has a usable energy of about 80 amp hours. So this is a skill that I had to learn, but the information is out there. there are many, many videos and I fell down numerous rabbit holes trying to learn how to create a 100 amp hour Victron system. But do you need that skill? But you could pay a guy, you could pay a guy to build you your dream system, just like something that comes out of Ape Adventure Vans. But then you've got somebody else's labor. Now I'm gonna be conservative and say that something like that is gonna cost about four days labor. And I'm gonna say somewhere at about 300 pounds a day. So now when I'm showing you something that has everything in there, that one of these grandiosa systems has got and would probably take you anywhere between one and two hours to do the final fitment. Are we saying that these match up price-wise at all? I have just sat on my computer and I have built everything that's in there out of Victron pieces and check the retail price. And it's coming out at about 5,000 pounds. I never suggest that you should pay retail for anything. This is not a sponsored video. And while you do get 25% off this, if at the end of this video you decide, well, no, Victron is still the way I want to go, reach out, I have a Victron guy. I'm allowed to say that because this video truly isn't sponsored. I just want to bring you the information you need when you think that you're getting less for more or more for less. You really do need to break down every single item. Within that 5,000 pounds where I created this system out of Victron parts, I didn't even consider cable. You will probably spend about 450 to 500 pounds on cables and crimps. If you are installing a 3000 VA, I know this from a friend, you will need a specialist crimping tool for the size wire that you are going to be using. Just take a look at the size of the wire, that gauge wire that is needed for the 3000 VA. We've got tooling to consider, we've got time, whether or not you're paying for someone else's time or using your own time, that has a value. You have the knowledge. Do you really need to learn all of that knowledge to build yourself one system? Then on the flip side, if you had someone else build your system, when there's a problem or a parameter that needs sorting or adjusting, have you then got the knowledge to take care of that? The idea of having independent parts that create a larger system does come with a few benefits. And that is, if one part was to fail, you can pinpoint the failed component and you can swap it out. And all the while, you would hope that the rest of the system would work. Well, that's the same with the Clayton. It is the first all-in-one system, definitely not a power bank, where you can actually do that. People are gonna ask, what if one component went wrong on the Clayton? Does the whole unit stop working? And it doesn't. If the MPPT was to fail, it would still allow you to take a charge via B2B. If the inverter did fail, 
it would still allow you to use the 12 volt. All of the parts are independent. It just so happens that they're all in one box. And it comes with a two year warranty and Clayton are here in the UK. So if you did have a failing, you would know where you could take it. You don't have to send it on the long boat back to China to get any kind of servicing. The only reason you're not going to choose the Clayton LPS2 is because you think you need a Victron. You think that that is the right thing to do because that's what all the big bad vans are doing. The Victron systems for me look absolutely fantastic. It has that whole open the door, come show your friends. It's impressive. It's impressive to be able to build one. It's impressive to look at. It is so nerdy that it's cool. But I'm starting to think that it might be the new 40 year old boot build. <laughs> So you have this massive system made of all this Victron stuff and you want to show your friends, you want to be able to say, I've got 800 amp hours of Victron power with all the Victron goodies. Does it matter? Does it truly matter? At the end of the day, if I have my Clayton in my cupboard that no one wants to see, you're not necessarily gonna want to show people your Clayton. It's a different product. It is something that you bury away and totally forget about it. If I'm over here with a Clayton system and you're over here with a Victron system and we built the same thing and I've got more money in my pocket and I've got more storage left over for space because believe me, these Victron systems, no matter how good you are at building them, that box, is the basic equivalent to this minus one of these. And I know in that picture that there is a wheel arch cover and there is the additional 160 amp hour battery. But if you are still struggling to visualize the size difference between these two setups, take a look at this. This packaging here almost exactly represents the size of the 3000 watt Phoenix inverter from Victron. Full discretion, this piece of packaging is in fact 50 mil longer than the Phoenix, but it is 10 mil shallower. Just the 3000 watt inverter from Victron comes out at 22,785 centimeters cube. And in fact, the whole Clayton, which does include a more powerful inverter, is coming out at 29,840. Now, while those numbers may not mean anything to you because no one knows what that truly means, the Victron inverter is two thirds the size of the whole Clayton system. I feel this is the only way for you guys to be able to see the visual difference in size between a Phoenix 3000 and the Clayton LPS2. The Clayton obviously stands quite a lot taller, yet the inverter will be a little bit longer in its length. Now, like I said to you before, this box is about 50 mil too long, but you do still need that space for wiring and things like that. There is no way to cut it. That Clayton LPS unit from a size point of view is absolutely fascinating. However we look at it, the fact that Clayton have managed to put something that needs all of those components in there and one of these that is two parts of a conventional system and it's already twice the size of that while i'm here directly comparing the phoenix 3000 to the lps2 in its totality i must tell you that just this inverter is 19 kilos and the whole system of the Clayton LPS2 is coming out at 27.5 kilos. I still feel that Victron are the best in town. If it's come to individual components, I would not have anything else. I just don't understand how everybody else seems to be making all of these components smaller and smaller and Victron haven't yet. So this Victron system here couldn't be any more basic. This was my first attempt at this kind of thing. Now, what you can't see is the 100 amp hour of super pack battery, the other side of there, which does in fact negate having to have BMSs and things like that because they're built in. There's also the 240 volt RCD unit the other side of there and the solar fuse disconnect. In here is a 3000 watt inverter which will allow a peak of 5000 watts. What does that look like in the Victron world? Well, that would be a 3000 VA. Now, calling it a 3000 VA would give you the impression that it's a 3000 watt inverter. Well, I dug a little bit deeper. VA doesn't necessarily mean watts. If you type into a Google search, 3000 VA in watts, that comes out at about 2700. So you get a little bit more on your inverter. But what some people may say is, well, it's 160 amp hours. How long is that really going to last? I'm showing you the LPS2. Not sure when it's coming, but it's definitely coming. We can expand this. You can make this as big 
as you want. If 134 amp hours of usable energy is not enough for you, well, we can make it as big as you like. This will take 400 watts of solar as it is, but since my last video, Clayton Technical actually reached out to me and said, if you truly needed to, you could in fact install an external MPPT and increase your solar input capabilities. Real world comparison scenario. A guy reached out to me and asked me to design and build a full Victron system. He wanted around 200 amp hours of battery. He wanted the ability to run a Ninja air fryer. The price came in at just under 5,000 pound. That did include all of the paraphernalia and the sundries that I needed. But on top of that, we would have my labor. Now I was going to suggest that it would take me three days. Once again, that was me being conservative, knowing that in fact, I would probably, because I don't do this too often, take a little bit longer. In the interim, when the customer was getting his van to a position where we could actually install the Victron system, I found the Clayton unit. By comparison, it was everything that I previously pieced together out of Victron components. And the starting price was 1,400 pounds cheaper, and that's without my 25% discount. Labor looked to be a quarter. I saw this being three days of building it in my garage, and then a day of installation. So he did end up with 134 amp hours as opposed to 200 amp hours. But when those additional units come out, and I believe some of them are gonna be sized at about 100 amp hours, and then the other ones are gonna be 240 or 280, you can never mix and match but you could daisy chain as many 100s or 240s as you like. So if you were off-grid obsessed, you could literally build this to any size you wanted. I put to him that by installing a Clayton system in his van, not only would he save a drastic amount of money, it's plug and play. You would never need to do any setups. You don't need to understand anything about it. There's basically two buttons on the unit, 12 volt, 240 volt. Be good to go and you would save so much space in your van. And then six months down the line, if you truly decided that 134 amp hours wasn't enough, you can expand your battery bank. I couldn't very well have this Clayton in my arsenal and put this video out out two weeks after installing a full Victron system that's going to take up all that space and cost him so much money. Because we became friends, I would feel that I was doing him an injustice, not letting him know that something like this exists. Now he did use the UAO 25, so there's only five units left at that discount price. Perfect analogy would be PC versus Mac. Think of how PCs used to be. To create all of that power, we used to have modems and wires and systems and servers and RAMs. I obviously didn't have any of that because I don't even know what I'm saying. Then the Mac came along and no one thought that it could be as powerful. Having all of those components in one place, we thought they would break, we thought it would fail. Well, guess what? I don't think Apple is failing. This isn't a right or wrong video. This isn't a you should do this or you shouldn't do that. But realizing that 99% of my viewers are DIYers and they want job satisfaction. My viewers seem to want to be able to install things themselves, to be able to tell people that yes, I did that. And when you did it yourself, you have a true understanding. So if something did go wrong on the road, you know where them wires are, you know what those connections look like. And that is the point. The Victron is a professional standard. And I'm not gonna say that it's unachievable. That Victron system there that's been in my black van from day one, I did that homeschooled on YouTube. The question is, will we start to see more Clayton models going in professional builds? Now I do have a question for you guys. If you were lucky enough to buy a professionally kitted out van, would you come to expect such a system like a Victron setup? The builder of that van could promise you that within a Clayton LPS2 and the follow-on expansion batteries, it could promise to deliver on everything that a conventional Victron setup would and does it matter when you press a switch and the light comes on that that power is not delivered from a blue box. Truly, you are never going to see 25% off of a Clayton unit ever again. It's not that kind of product. You're not gonna see it in Black Friday, Cyber Tuesday, spring sales and summer events. Once these six units, five units have gone, they're gone. Now, I haven't actually spent all that much time showing you guys the unit, and that is because I've already done that and I didn't want to repeat myself. If this is the first time you're seeing the Clayton LPS2 on my channel, hit this button here where I show you a little bit more in depth of its features and I totally bulletproof the point that this is not a power bank and this is something a little bit different.